The holiday of Purim. Why do you want to kill us? We have a holiday known as the holiday of Purim. This marks an anniversary of when the Jewish nation were faced with an unprecedented threat that has never happened before. A threat parallel to none. This was a threat of total annihilation. In one day, the holiday of Purim, which this year falls out on the weekend of March 24, 2024. Every year it falls out corresponding to the Hebrew month, the 14th and 15th of the Hebrew month. And it changes every year on the English calendar. But this holiday of Purim marks an anniversary which is very chilling to us, especially this year, of what the world has witnessed has occurred on October 7 in Israel. When 1,400 innocent men, women, children, young and old, were indiscriminately slaughtered, murdered by Hamas. The story of Purim happened 400 years BCE in Persia, where Persia at the time was the superpower of the world. The king was the king over 127 countries. And his word was the final word. As the story of Purim unfolds itself, where King Ahasuerus was seeking for a new wife, had a beauty pageant, and the only one that King Ahasuerus saw favor was Queen Esther. In his courtyard was the great Rabbi Mordechai. Mordechai, the righteous one. Mordechai, the most known rabbi of the time, the head of the courts, was in the king's yard. The king also had a wicked advisor by the name of Haman. And he required that everyone bow down to him. Mordechai would not bow down to him because it's against Jewish law to bow down to human beings. We only bow down to God. Haman decided to set a plot and to convince the king to annihilate every single Jew in the world, young and old, men and women, anywhere in the world, in one day. The word Purim is from a Persian word as drawing a lot, where Haman draw a lot and decided what day he's going to pick to be the day when this worldwide genocide to annihilate every single Jew is going to occur. When Haman draw the lot, he approached the king and told him that there is a nation amongst you. This nation is a one nation. They are spread out throughout all your countries. They have their own laws and you should not allow them to live. Ahasuerus, who was a very strange king, he would go whimsical from one part, from right to wrong in no time. He authorized Haman to carry out this decree. Haman was given the king's seal to send out messengers to the whole world to announce that on one day every single Jew will be murdered and killed. This was a threat that has never happened before. 
The Jewish people have been displaced, the Jewish people have been attacked, the Jewish people have suffered pogroms and holocausts. It was geographically in certain locations, but there never ever was an event that occurred internationally in one day. That was Haman's plot. Queen Esther, who was chosen to be the queen now, never revealed to the king that she was Jewish until Mordechai approached her and said, Esther, this is the reason why you are the queen. I need you to approach the king and I need you to ask him to erase this decree. In the meantime, Haman built a huge gallow in the king's yard where he was going to hang Mordechai. And that was going to be the end of Judaism throughout the world. Queen Esther fasted for three days. Mordechai gathered all the Jews and they cried and they prayed to God. After three days, Queen Esther, who wasn't allowed to fast in the royal kingdom, nonetheless, she fasted for three days. She approached the king uninvited which was a danger in itself. When the king saw her, he welcomed her and says, what is it that you want? She revealed to him for the very first time that she is a Jewess and said, you have signed a decree with Haman to annihilate me and my nation. And the king said, oh my God, I did not realize that. Who exactly is doing this? And she pointed the finger at Haman. And the king immediately flip-flopped the whole decree. And he told Queen Esther, this will not happen. As a matter of fact, I'm going to recall all the messengers who was, who was so hastily running to send the decree. I'm going to recall them. As a matter of fact, I'm going to take the gallow that was prepared from Mordechai and I'm going to hang Haman and his 10 children. And I'm going to give the Jewish people unprecedented freedom and free from taxes, etc. In one moment, everything got flipped upside down. One moment, the Jewish people were being annihilated in one day. And all of a sudden, through the selfless sacrifice of this woman, Queen Esther, the hero of Purim, that we read the story, it's called the story of Queen Esther, that the Jewish people's life was spared. Not only were they spared, but they all repented to God and they all rededicated themselves to God. They, they, they turned a leaf, even though they have assimilated so much into the Persian life, when they saw this miraculous turn of events, they returned back to their roots. And they began observing the Torah laws, just like it was given at Mount Sinai. It thus has become declared this day to be the happiest day of the year. This is the holiday that's celebrated every single year of this miraculous events. There's so much that we learn from this story. We learn how God Almighty in heaven ultimately controls everything. No matter how bleak our predicament may look, it could be flipped over in a second. Purim is all about flipping things over. As a matter of fact, many people dressed in masquerade. Many people think it's the Jewish Halloween. It has nothing to do with Halloween whatsoever. It's masquerade because it reminds us how God's miracle was masqueraded and through that concept children come dressed in costumes and adults are dressed up in all different types of costumes but how do we celebrate it we celebrate it by retelling the whole story of Purim again and again every year we read it two times one in the evening one during the day but we don't just read the story we relive the story Every time we mention Haman's name, we pound on the ground to blot out his name and what he stood for. But how do we express our gratefulness to God for sparing us? 
the way you do it is through unconditional love. And what we do on this day is we share baskets of food, of two, at least two kinds of foods to each other. And this happens throughout the whole Jewish world on the day of Purim this year on Sunday, how everyone is going to be delivering Purim baskets. Not only that, we're also going to give charity to at least two people. And then we're going to sit down and have a great feast. This is all done with such joy and happiness. And to always remember that in any moment, everything can be flipped for the better. And this is the story of Purim. Yes, they wanted to kill us once again. And that this is a story that repeats itself over and over and over again in history. From, from Pharaoh in Egypt to the Amaleks on the way to Mount Sinai to, to, to Israel. And the nations that we had to face as we were making ourselves through the desert, arriving in Israel. And then finally, we finally made it to Israel. And they still want to annihilate us. They still want to kill us. And we've been through all the Holocaust programs and genocides. All these horrific events. But Am Yisrael Chai, the nation of Israel, still lives on. So even though they want to kill us, they'll never annihilate us. Because God has blessed us so that we can do what we do best, is be creative and be a contributing nation to the world. And given the Jewish people a chance, they will continue on contributing to the world and teaching the world about benevolence, kindness, and teaching the world what it means to accept God, the divine presence, as a reality, to coexist in this physical world with spirituality. And that is what Purim has taught us. During the days of Purim, many Jewish people have assimilated and they have partaken in the great feast. But yet, when they realize how God revealed himself, they were able to repent and start over again. Each one of us has that same opportunity. We may have slipped and slid in life, spiritually, physically, or other ways. We can always begin anew. And that's what Purim teaches us. It teaches us that we can always flip things around. What was yesterday doesn't have to be today. May we all celebrate the holiday of Purim with much joy and happiness. Be generous. Be kind. Share with what you have. When God looks down from heaven and sees us being benevolent to each other, God is benevolent to us. May we celebrate many such anniversaries and ultimately let's celebrate the greatest joy, which would be the revelation of the King Messiah speedily in our days. Amen. God bless you. God loves you. May God protect our soldiers who are fighting for Israel's survival and bring home all the hostages safe and well. Amen.